Greetings, everyone, boys and girls, young and old, old and new, and welcome to the latest installment of WYTR's Radio Theatre. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we at WYTR bring you an assortment of spine-tingling tales from the master of suspense, Edgar Allan Poe. More than tales of woe, these are tales of Poe. So sit back and relax, if you dare, as we present our first shuddersome tale, Poe's most famous poem, The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly, I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly, Eagerly I, I wished wish for the morrow. Vainly, I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and the radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken sad certain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before so that now still the beating of my heart i stood repeating tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door some Some late late visitor entreating entrance at at my my chamber chamber door. door this is it and nothing more Presently, my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then, no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I open wide the door. Darkness Darkness there, and and nothing nothing more. more. Deep into that darkness, peering. Long I stood there, wondering, fearing. Doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken. And the darkness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word. Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word. Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. What happens next? You'll find out when the raven continues. But first, let's take time for a short story of murder and madness, as WYTR Radio Theater brings you The Telltale Heart. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Nervous. Very, very, dreadfully nervous. Thump, thump. I have been and I am, but mad? Thump, thump. Thump, thump. (laughs) Mad. (laughs) The disease did not make me mad. It sharpened my senses. You say madness. I say a highly developed sense of hearing. I have exceptional hearing. The scrape of a chair in another room, the fall of a leaf on the ground. I have heard all things in heaven and earth. I have heard things in hell. 
You don't need things to stop make you mad. The eye. Shh. Mad? Ha! Sane. Look. Look how calm I am. Listen. Thump, thump. I will tell you the whole story. You'll see how calmly I tell the tale. You will change your mind. Morning. Good morning. Sleep well? Like a stone. When, when, when? when? I don't know. It's impossible to say. As soon as a thought entered my mind... Kill Kill the old man. Kill Kill the old man. It haunted me. Day and night. Why, why, why? I don't know. There is no motivation. No wrongdoing on his part. Morning. Good morning. I loved the old man. Sleep well? Like a stone. He never struck me, nor insulted me. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. It was never him at all. It was his eye. The eye! There. The eye of a vulture, pale blue with a film. And every time that eye looks at me. The eye, the evil, 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 the evil eye. eye. What's the matter? Sorry? What's the matter? You're staring. Nothing. Sorry. Lost in thought. <laughs> the eye. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. Kill the old man. And so by degrees, Kill the old man. I made up my mind Kill the old man. to take his life and rid myself of the eye forever. Morning. Good morning. Sleep well? Like a stone. Kill, Kill the, the old, old man. man. think me mad. The mad know nothing. I know. I am wise. You'll see how wise I am. Thump, thump. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. I was so kind before I killed him. The whole week, and then I practiced. Midnight. I stand outside his door. Turn the latch. Open the door. Slowly. Slowly. Slow now. Creak. Shh. The old man's sleep must not be disturbed. There's just enough space to slip my head in and peek into the room. Ah, this takes a whole hour. Would the mad do this? Would the mad be so precise? Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. Would the mad do this for seven nights? Midnight comes, turn latch, open door, slowly, and peek, and again. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. Midnight, latch, door, slowly. Peak. The eye, the evil, the evil, the eye. I was waiting. The eye, the evil, the evil, the eye, the eye, the evil, the eye. The old man did me no wrong. I was waiting for the eye. Morning. Good morning. Sleep well? Like a stone. He had no idea. No idea what I was doing. What I was thinking? The eighth night, midnight, latch, door, slowly. Creak. Shh. Who's there? Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. A whole hour I stand in the door. Thump, thump. The room is dark as pitch. He can't see me. Oh. He's listening for death. Thump, thump. Oh. The sound of terror, I know it well. It rises from the bottom of my soul. Night after night, while the world sleeps, terror echoes up from my soul. Fear. 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 Fear.
Not mad. Not mad. I know it well, that's all. I know what the old man felt, but I... I chuckle at heart. <laughs> thump, thump. His fears are growing. It is nothing but the wind in the chimney. He tries to wave them away. Thump, thump. It is nothing but a mouse on the floor. Trying to comfort himself in vain. Thump, thump. It is merely a cricket. Thump, thump. But he knows in his heart. Is anyone there? It is too late. Death stands with his black shadow before him. It is nothing. Nothing. Death approaches. Ah, there! Ah, there! Do you see? The eye has opened! Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Do you thump, hear? Thump. The old man's heart. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Quicker! Thump, thump. Quicker thump, thump. it beats! Thump, thump. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. And louder! Thump, thump. Louder the heart will burst. Someone will hear. The neighbors. The time is now. His hour has come. No. No. It's done. Done. <laughs> done. Done. Stone dead. The eye will trouble me no more. Kill the old man. You think me mad. <laughs> a mad person would not take these next wise steps. I cut up the corpse. So oh, ho, wise indeed. The eye, the evil, evil the, the evil, evil the, the eye. eye. Head, arms, legs. Not a drop of blood anywhere. A tub catches all. <laughs> I am sharp as a... Sharp as a... Three planks up from the floor. And the body goes underneath. Genius. I place the board so carefully, so cunningly, nothing. No human eye. The eye, the, the evil, evil, the evil, the, evil, the eye. eye. Not even his would have discovered it. Four AM. Still dark. Who's that? What have I to fear? My heart is light. Yes? Good evening. How can I help you? Sorry to disturb you at such a late hour. Why, it's no trouble at all. <laughs> but what has brought the police to my door? The neighbors heard a shriek. They suspect foul play. My goodness! May we search the premises? By all means, officers, by all means. Uh, the shriek, I'm afraid, was my own. A bad dream. The owner is away in the country. Come, come, this is his room right here. Do you believe it? I brought them right into the old man's room. <laughs> Everything looks all right. Sorry to have disturbed you. Please, have a seat, won't you? You must be weary from your late-night adventure. Right in the old man's room. Genius! Thank you. Thank you indeed. As you can see, there's nothing- Thump, thump! Um, as you can see, there's nothing- Nothing out of order. Thump, thump. We appreciate your cooperation. It's no trouble. Thump, thump. Do you? Yes. Nothing. Thump, thump. Do you hear that? We often get these calls. They all have to be checked out. Thump, thump. Stop it! You remember the body in the basement, Bill? I sure do. Thump, thump. They must hear. They must! They must know what I have done! All because a neighbor reported an odd noise. Thump, thump. Thump, thump. And then, thump, thump. there was the body thump, in the thump. garden? You remember that? Thump, thump. Probably never would have found that one out thump, except thump. for the dog. Oh, that thump, dog. Thump. Dug right thump, down thump. to a pair of hands. <laughs> 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 they are mocking me. Laughing at me. I can't take this anymore, villains! Hide no more! I admit the deed! Tear up the planks! Here! Here! It is the beating of his hideous heart! <gasps> well, that story certainly had a lot of heart, didn't it? <laughs> and now, part two of The Raven. Back into the chamber, turning. Oh, my soul within me burning! Soon again I heard a tapping. Somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I. 
Surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what threat is in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here, I flung the shutter, one with many a flur and flutter. In there stepped a stately raven of the stately days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he. But with mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door. Perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling. By the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, Art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly, foul to hear discourse so plainly. Though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast above the sculptured bust. Above his chamber door. With such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered. Not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered. Other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program to bring you this message about the Fort Wayne Youth Theatre. As one of the oldest operating theatres for young performers in the country, youth theatre has been educating, engaging, and entertaining audiences since 1934. Youth theatre directors and teaching artists offer year-round programming, including camps, classes, and private lessons designed to make every young performer a triple threat. Plus, our touring and main stage shows have something for everyone. Experience the magic of Narnia this holiday season as Youth Theatre presents The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe live on the Embassy stage this December. In March, join us as we highlight the young heroes of 2020 in an original play, part of our Linda L. Ruffalo Young Heroes of Conscience series. And finally, the season closes in May with the first installment of our Friendly Shakespeare series, a 70-minute youth-oriented version of William Shakespeare's classic comedy, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Don't miss a moment of the drama. And speaking of drama, let's check in on part three of The Raven, shall we? Startled at the stillness broken, by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till the song one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope, the melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking. Fancy unto fancy thinking. What this ominous bird of yore. What this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore. Meant in croaking. Nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing. To the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining. With my head at ease reclining. On the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er. She shall press, ah, nevermore. How will it all end? We'll find out in our final installment of The Raven, 
But before we do, let's take a walk on the sunnier side of the street with a comedy. That's right, a comedy, presenting one of Poe's lesser-known works entitled Lionizing. <laughs> That is to say, I was a great man. My name is Robert Jones. I was born somewhere in the city of Fum Fudge, and I have a nose. Oh, what a genius, said my mother. Son, said my father. You've got a big one. And to that I grasped my nose with both hands, all throughout my childhood until the day I came of age. My son, said my father. What is the chief end of your existence? My father, it is the study of nosology. And what, Robert? He inquired. Is nosology? Sir, it is the science of noses. And can you tell me? He demanded. What is the meaning of a nose? A nose, my father, has been various defined by a thousand different authors. It is now noon. We shall have time enough to get through all of them by midnight. To begin, the nose, according to... Uh, Robert, Bologna's. Robert, 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 Robert. I am thunderstruck at the extent of your information. It is very... That's a lot of stuff. You should consider your education finished and done. And really, it's time for you to fend for yourself. Follow your nose. Such a smart man. Follow it, and you will arrive at lionship. Do you really think so, father? Throw that nose around, and you'll be treated like a celebrity in no time. So get out of my house, and God bless you. I considered this fortunate, and I resolved to be guided by my paternal advice. I determined to follow my nose, and wrote a pamphlet on nosology on the spot. Fum Fudge was in an uproar. Wonderful genius! Superb physiologist! Clever fellow! Fine writing! Profound thinker! Oh, go on. <laughs> I, I I mean it. Go on. Great man. Divine soul. One of us. Who can he be? What can he be? Where, Where can, can he, he be? be? Where indeed. I pay these people no mind. I am after bigger fish. A celebrity in a small pond is no celebrity at all. The scene unfolds itself in the artist's shop. Duchess of Bless My Soul sits for her portrait. The Marquess of So-and-So holds the Duchess's poodle. The Earl of This and That flirts with her salts. Ahem. <coughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, my. Oh, shocking. What will you take for it? For his nose? A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. Beautiful. A thousand pounds. Do you warrant it? I do. <laughs> Is it quite original? Hmm. Has no copy been taken? None. Admirable. A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. Precisely. A thousand pounds? Just so. You shall have them. I shall draw up a check on the spot. I became the talk of the town. That sad little rake the Prince of Wales invited me to dinner. The scene was set with all the established elegant Z. All fools are philosophers. All philosophers are fools. Let me tell you about the most exquisite meriton of red tongue. Cauliflowers with veluette sauce. Ooh. Did you know the earth is supported by a sky blue cow with an incalculable number of green horns? Ah. I know exactly where to find the five and fourth tragedies of Homer Jr. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
and myself. Oh, myself. I spoke of myself, 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 nosology, myself, my pamphlet, myself, my nose, and myself. Marvelous, clever man. Will you go to Almax, pretty creature? Upon honor, dear Duchess. Nose and all. As I live. Here, then, is a card, my life. Shall I say you will be there? Dear Duchess, with all my heart. Pashaw, no, but with all your nose. <laughs> Almac. The rooms were crowded to suffocation. He is coming, said somebody on the staircase. He is coming, said somebody farther up. He is come, he is come, the little love. Devil! Sir, <laughs> elector of blood enough, you are a baboon. Sir, Donna und Blitzen. <gasps> A duel was the only answer. We exchanged cards, and the next morning... Ready? Ready. Achtung! Ah, meine Nase! His nose! You shot off his nose! Success! This would take me to new heights. I called on all my friends. Fool! Dot! Ninny! Noodle! Be, Be off. off! Father. Son. Father. Son, son, son. What is the chief end of my existence? Well, my son, it is still the study of nosology, but in hitting the elector upon the nose, you overshot the mark. Do I not have a fine nose? You have a fine nose, it is true, but blood enough has none. He has become the hero of the day. I grant you that in Fumfudge the greatness of a lion is in proportion to the size of his nose, but good heavens, there is no competing with a lion who has no nose at all. And now, listeners, our time together is nearly at an end. So let's wrap things up with the conclusion of The Raven. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer. Swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch! I cried. Thy God has lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee, respite. Respite and Nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh quaff, this kind Nepenthe, and forget the lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil. Whether temper sent, or whether tempest tossed, thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted. On this desert land, enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil. By that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp sainted maiden, whom the angels named Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels named Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend. I shrieked upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit, Quit the bust upon my door. Take thy beak from out of my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, 
Still is sitting. Still is sitting. On the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of the demons that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him, streaming, throws the shadow on the floor. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted. Nevermore. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you at home are still clutching your sweetheart for dear life, you need fear nevermore. Thank you to our friends at the University of St. Francis, Department of Music Technology, and WBOI 89.1 FM. And a round of applause for the WYTR radio players, Emma Humbarger, Josiah Bates, Owen Newsom, Ella Antibus, Zadon Spradling, Olivia Wheeler, Brenner Newsom, and Olivia Nyfong. <laughs> To learn more about the Fort Wayne Youth Theatre, visit fortwayneyouththeatre.org. On behalf of everyone here at WYTR Radio in Fort Wayne, Indiana, thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.